Good morning. <clears throat> Today we look at verses 47 through 71 of chapter 22 of Luke's gospel. And Jesus has just finished praying in the garden of, of uh, Gethsemane. And, and he's come and talked to his disciples again. I mean, he's, you know, Luke says he's out at the Mount of Olives. I'm sorry. We'll just go with that. Um, but as he's speaking with his disciples and asking why, why they're sleeping while, while he is praying and so deeply distressed, it says, verse 47, a suddenly a crowd came. And, and Luke says, the one called Judas. You know, he, he, um, I, 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 I sense a little bit of despair. I mean, when, you know, he says the one called Judas. He doesn't just say Judas came. But the one called Judas, it is just kind of a put down, I think, in some ways. But anyway, one of the 12 was leading the crowd. And he approached Jesus to kiss him. And, and Jesus asked, is it with a kiss that you will betray me? And, and then the other disciples, you know, wondered if they, should, if they should strike with the sword. And it says, verse 50, one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And I know I've heard it many times that, you know, to cut off the right ear from, you know, you would have to be basically behind him because you'd be, I mean, unless you're a really bad aim, but regardless, um, Jesus said no more of that. And he, and Jesus touched the ear and healed him. And then he spoke then to the chief priests and the officers of the temple police and the elders who had come, you know, so it, you know, the, it was the, you know, the religious leaders who were seeking to arrest Jesus and, and you know, to do away with him. And, and so it was, you know, the temple police and everyone that came. It, you know, I mean, it's, I remember when I was growing up and stuff, I always imagined that it was the Roman soldiers that came and arrested Jesus. But, but he was first arrested by the temple police and taken to the temple. But Jesus says to these, these people, you know, the, the, the leaders of the temple, he said, why do you come now? I mean, I was in your, I was in the temple day after day teaching. You could have arrested me at any point in time. And, and the reality then is with, with that, why would they need Judas to kiss Jesus to identify him? I mean, it's, it's so many things that, um, that are just a little bit out of the ordinary or kind of beyond belief in some ways. But he says, have you come with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit. And then um, he says, this is your hour and the power of darkness. And you, I mean, there's getting to be an awful lot of crime and an awful lot of mayhem that happens during the daylight hours in our world today. But throughout all of history, you know, more, more bad stuff happens in the dark because of the secrecy because of not being able to be identified as easily you know and but but more bad stuff happens after dark than any time and and so the power of darkness this is the power of satan at work and the power of of sin and evil in the world and uh, he says you know this is your hour and you know it's the time that they have some little bit of power over jesus that way they seized him and led him away, it says, bringing him to the high priest's house. And again, I always, I mean, I've always known, I mean, even, you know, years and years ago that, you know, that Jesus was, you know, the high priests and everybody were out for him. But, you know, it just, you know, it's, it's to think about the fact that, that these very people that Jesus came for are the ones that turned so greatly against him. And... You know, it, it happens in our world today, you know, that people turn against their leader, people turn against, you know, whomever it may be, and 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 those things happen. But so they brought Jesus to the high priest's house. Peter was following, and there was a fire in the courtyard of the high priest's house. And you know, kind of the, you know, his his house was probably in the palace, you know, the or in the in the temple rather, or nearby there. And it was around that fire in the high priest's garden that, that Peter denied Jesus these three times. And, 
And Luke tells us, you know, the three answers that Peter gives. Woman, I do not know him. Man, I am not. And man, I do not know what you're talking about. And after that third denial, the cock crows. And then it says, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And I remember that scene from the movie, The Passion of the Christ. And I remember that that scene from being in different cantatas, you know, many years ago, that when they would come to that point, that whoever was playing Jesus would turn and look at Peter. And, and I think about not only did Jesus look and see Peter, but Jesus looks and sees me. I mean, he, you know, he knows my sin. He knows my, the errors of my ways. And it, it is, it's so humbling and so terrifying in many ways to, to realize that, you know, God is watching. God knows what's going on. And, you know, we're, we're told that, you know, God knows what we're, what's on our minds, what we're going to pray even before we pray it. But we, we pray knowing that, that God hears our prayer and that it's good for us. But to think about that, you know, that, you know, Jesus can turn and look at Peter. But to think what it feels like to know that Jesus turns and looks at me, you know, it, it's, you know, and then Peter remembered and he says he went out and wept bitterly. And I mean, the remorse that he felt is, I, I understand that remorse because uh, I, I feel that same way, you know, that you know, when I do these things that I know I'm not supposed to do, or you know, when I realize the sin that I've done, you know, I, I'm filled with that remorse, but yet the thanksgiving also knowing that forgiveness comes when I ask for it and do my very best to repent and turn away from that sin. Going on with uh, verse 33, the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. So it wasn't just the Roman soldiers later that mock him and beat him, but the temple police and, and the religious leaders and those, you know, that are questioning Jesus there. You know, they, they blindfold him and they keep saying, prophesy, who struck you, you know? And, you know, if, you know, it was like, well, if you know all of this stuff, you should know, you know, which one of us hit you or whatever, you know, they were, they were mocking him and just, you know, make it, making fun of him. And, you know, the, and I think sometimes of when, you know, when, uh, when a crowd, a gang, a gang, three or four people uh, get together and bully someone else. And how they, you know, one person says something, the next one more and more and more, you know, it's just, you know, they get, they get together and they have this feeling of, of power over this person they're bullying. And this is what they were doing to Jesus. But I, I understand the mob effect. I understand how, how the being a part of the group can make other people, make some people speak and do things that they normally wouldn't do. And when day came, when the daylight came, I mean, so Jesus has been arrested. They've been there, you know, all night in front of the, these chief priests and everyone. And so when day came, the assembly of the elders, both the chief priests and scribes gathered around and they brought Jesus to their council. And they were questioning him. And, you know, he said, they ask, if you are the Messiah, tell us. And he says, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. You know, and then he says, but from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. And he said, are you the Son of God? And he says, you say that I am. And this was blasphemy. This was the blasphemy that they needed then to to take him and we'll find that out tomorrow that in chapter 23 that they then arose the whole crowd this whole multitude of people the chief priests scribes in the temple and the police of the temple take jesus to pilate so they ask him are you the messiah and when he you know answers them the way he does they understand him to say yes i am the son of god and it's just like Jesus said, if I say yes, you're not going to believe it. 
and they didn't believe it. Even after the resurrection, they didn't believe it. But we believe it, right? Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, the one who grants forgiveness, shows us God's love and grace. And, and as much as it, it hurts to see the rejection, it hurts to see Jesus mocked and scorned and beaten, um, we know that in the end, that in the end, God wins. And Jesus wins for us.